What's up, my babies? I'm back on uh, MTG Arena, and I started playing Brawl because it's a uh, it's kind of like a commander, but not really, but kind of. But there's 60 cards instead of 100, and there's no commander damage, and it's kind of the same. But it's not the same because it's 1v1, and it's not as fun because it's a lot more competitive. I find a lot more aggro decks, a lot more annoying cards. But hey, it's funner than standard, if you want my opinion. So uh, I hadn't played in a while, so I had to start from scratch. Like I had no cards, and uh, it's something I find uh, I found a bit uh, annoying with MTG Arena. If you don't play for a while, you come back, you just have you know zero cards. You know, well that's for standard. For brawl, you know, I had everything I had before, but still I had to buy uh, quite some packs to get something uh, decent. So I build a uh, Nethroy, Apex of Death. Uh, he's a Carador color, 5-5 five, five, Death Touch, Life Link. Mutate for 7. Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, pretty good. Uh, it's not a fast deck. Uh, I run a lot of ramp. We'll sort of start off slow. Uh, well, I have this guy, who's my only human in the deck because you can't mutate on a, on a human. 1-3, uh, your opponent can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. And I'm not the kind of guy who likes to play like a, a prison card, stuff like that. And by far, you know, those are the, the, kind, uh, the kind of cards that I hate. But he's really good, you know, if you're playing against Winota and you're gonna get destroyed the second she hits the field, like dropping this on turn 3 saves lives for real, like often. Uh, a lot of ramp. Elysian, Karyatid, uh, Incubation Druid and Paradise Druid. All three good, uh, good little ramps. Uh, Paradise Druid has hexproof, so he's by far the best because there's a lot of bolt the birds in this uh, format. I realize it's not like Commander. You know, you play this in Commander turn two, people are gonna, are gonna be like, "What the, what the fuck?" Like, go, go play brawl. Couple of removal, dire tactics, exile a creature. If you don't control human, lose life equal to that to that creature's toughness. Ass trophy, of course, uh, the best. I forgot there was Arcane Signet in here, but there is. Almost auto include in any deck, if you want my opinion. Murder. Murder on a beat, yo. Uh, Mythos of Nethroi. One of uh, one of the new cards that's pretty good. It's got to see playing commander for sure. For three, destroy target, non-land permanent. Basically, at instant speed. If you're playing the Carador colors, which is uh, black, green, and white. Wolf Strider. I'll just go down here. Wolf Strider, latest edition. He's a sack outlet. I, you know, I think I needed one. There's a lot of uh, Agent of Treacheries and a lot of uh, stuff that exiles. So he's been like the bomb. Plus, he, when he comes into play, you get two creatures. So early game, you can get a little blocker. Late game, you can get maybe something else to mutate, you know, if he gets destroyed. So he's really good. Mortify, more removal. Knight of Autism. Destroy target enchantment, artifact. Chromatic Lantern. Uh, I used to run another Dork. But they get killed so often, like most of the time. Most of the time they get just killed on turn two, the second they, they come into play. So artifacts tend to stick a bit more. So I took off I took out a, a mana dark and I put this. It's a lot better. I have a couple things that do uh, tokens, Cub Warden. Because the thing is that mutate is good, not just when you mutate your commander. Once he's on the field, you can mutate again him again with something else, you know, and that's I think something that people forget so a cup warden just to mutate him maybe later uh, put two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink yeah and he's a three five lifelink he's great against aggro I mean I love getting this guy versus aggro broad mooth luminous brood mooth pretty good the Mikaeus of brawl you know they die and they don't have flying they come back with a flying counter so pretty good shatter the sky another latest edition uh, you know Never been a fan of board wipes in Commander, uh, well, no, now, nowadays, I mean. But in Brawl, I think it's pretty good if, uh, you know, the other guy is just shitting creatures left and right. It's gonna be pretty good. Dirge Bat, another mutate, destroy target uh, creature or planes or current opponent control. And he has flash, so he's, he's kind of good, you know. You flash him at the end of his turn, then you mutate on your turn. A double of a value. Beast Whisper, you know, I don't know why you would whisper to Beast. You can just talk to them normally, but this guy does it and he draws a card when you cast a creature spell. Gem Razor, another mutate, destroy artifact or enchantment. Once again, this guy I think maybe he's got to see playing commander. I don't know, you know, because there's no ATB with the mutates. That's the thing. If you bring back the mutates from your graveyard to the battlefield, they, they don't they don't have any effects. So you know, downside of that. Guardian Project, you know, if there's one project you want a guardian for, it's this. 
draw a card whenever a creature enters the battlefield, technically. Pretty bonkers. Pelucranos, zero power, so uh, technically when you cast a uh, Netheroy, you bring him back for free. So he's really good, you know, drop him. If I get a Dork, I can drop him on th turn 3, so you get a 6-6 six, six on turn 3. You can start fighting shit left and right. You don't mind if he dies, you can bring him back. God of Ketra, I tell you, the card with the least interactions with anything, but she's just so freaking good. Another thing that does tokens, 3-6 double strike. Usually when she dies, I just dump her in my graveyard. Cavalier of Night. I love the Cavaliers, to be honest, even in Commander, 4-5 uh, lifelink, can sack a creature, destroy a creature. Lifelink is really relevant, I realized, I mean, sometimes I get down to like 5 life versus certain decks. I drop this dude, start attacking, get my life back. The MVP of the deck is Doom Whisperer. You know, magic has changed, huh? Back in the day, you would get like a 6-6 six, six trample for a 8 mana. And now you have a 6-6 flying trample for 5 mana. No drawback, no like crazy converted mana cost, plus he has a pay to life surveil. And that's what I'm trying to do with this guy. Usually if I can mutate on next turn, I'm going to dump a lot of stuff in my graveyard. But he is just bonkers with airy ultimatum, which is one of my best finishers. Return any number of target permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if I get a couple of lifelinks uh, early game and just start attacking and I'm like 40-50 life, I drop the Doom Whisper. I, I go to like, I don't go under 5 life usually, I stay at 5 life, because I drop him, then at the end of their turn I surveil, then back on my turn I do this, and it does some pretty crazy plays, it's just an insta scoop usually. Cavalier Thorns, uh, I'd say the second best creature, when he comes in, 5-6 reach, uh, look at the top 5 cards of your library, you can put a land from among them onto the battlefield and the rest in your graveyard. When he dies, you can exile him. If you do, you can put a card from your graveyard on top of your library. I usually don't use that because I don't want to exile him. I, I want to bring him back. So it fills the graveyard, ramps a bit, pretty good. Return to the Wild Speaker. I'm not too sure of this card. It, it, the fact that it's instant speed, I like it. Plus, th plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn could be a kind of finisher, but usually I just use it to draw cards. I don't know if there's anything else better that I could use. Anyways, if you, get a, if you have advice for me, I'm willing to trade this card for another draw card. Uh, I feel like I'm already playing like the best in my colors. But, you know, usually I draw minimum 5 off of this, you know. So pay 5, draw 5. It's pretty good. Another all-star, Underrealm Lich. Uh, he's really good. I mean, pay for life, he can become indestructible. So he's always going to be there for your mutate. When you draw, if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three, put one in your hand, the rest in your graveyard. So what I do, I just go for the lands usually, put all the creatures in the graveyard. He's really good, really annoying. Tristani, pretty good. I wasn't too sure at the beginning, but you know, once again, early game, if you get a ramp, you uh, dump her out on turn uh, four. You have blockers with lifelink. Uh, you know, she's pretty good. And the fact that she has one power, she doesn't cost much to come back with Nethroi. That's really what we're looking for. You know, creatures without you know two crazy big powers the hunt of high tower this is just a little fetish i like this guy a lot you know three three flying lifelink uh, whenever he attacks opponent discards a card then he can pump himself with each card that goes in the graveyards so a little fetish once again yeah i know he costs six but he's three three so you know i can bring back him and a lot more with the nethroi kogla a lot of power so you know i can't abuse him too much with nethroi but still comes in he fights that's pretty good he's one of my go-to guys for removal the ultimatum, I mean, seriously, this card alone makes me want to play Carador again in Commander. It's that good, you know? I just miss playing, because in Commander, there's, there's a lot of graveyard removal, and not really in this format, to be honest. You know, maybe not yet. People just don't play it, you know? So, you can really abuse your graveyard. In Commander, I don't. You know, I used to play Carador, Muldoth, Muldothra. I don't, I didn't fill my graveyard like crazy, you know? I was, uh, I was cautious. But with this, kind of makes you want to fill your graveyard, right? Meteor Golem, really good too. Uh, three power, so you can bring him back uh, for cheap with Nethroi. Well, another one of the finishers, uh, Forerunners. I usually use this with Finale of Devastation. So I go get the Forerunner, they get plus two, plus two, in addition to all that. Maybe Overkill, you know? <laughs> I'm not too sure of the Forerunner yet. I rarely win with him, to be honest. I, I always win with Finale or Ultimatum or just by attacking. So I'm not too sure. This is another guy. I'm not too sure. You know, I'm never happy to see him in my opening hand. You know, like I get final early game. I'm going to use it anyways. And the Great Henge. 
freaking bonkers. I'm never sure of this card. You know, it costs nine. I'm like, nah. Then on turn four, I play Pelucranos. Then all, all, all of a sudden, cost three. Drop it on turn four. Uh, it's really good. You know, draw a card whenever a creature enters the battlefield. That's pretty bonkers. It ramps. It does everything you want. For your lands, just your typical everyday lands. I don't know why I have an Evolving Wild in here. You know, a lot of lands that come into play tap. You know, the temples, uh, these things that give you a life. Um, this thing here. Triple color though. Fable Passage. Evolving Wilds. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not the commander or mana base, that's for sure. But uh, we do it with what we have. Castle Lockwain. Uh, the only... The only uh, special land I have. It's pretty good. Late game, early game. Okay. You know, pretty basic. So that's it. Hope you enjoy. Uh, go see some gameplay. I mean, it's a, it's, per it's a really fun deck. That's for sure. You know, you can tell. Pretty high power level cards. So, uh, so uh, talk to you guys later. And uh, that's it. Bye-bye.